Okay, so thank you for coming. My name is Elena Zannoni, and can you hear me okay? Is the audio okay? All right, thanks. Um, so I, I work at Oracle, and um, this talk will be about tracing in Linux in general and with emphasis on, you know, a little bit of history of the various tools and uh, infrastructure and also what is happening in the last few months, what has happened in the last few months for the various uh, uh, tools. All right, so first uh, I usually do a, a little introduction, a high-level view of uh, the building blocks that are in the infrastructure in the kernel uh, that are used by the various trace point uh, tools. So the first uh, and the oldest is K-probes, um, which uh, allows dynamic kernel tracing. Um, basically, it allows you to trace a running kernel, and that's you know the, the lowest level infrastructure that we have. Um, of course, it requires kernel configurations uh, uh, config k-probe to be set to yes um, and basically what it does is does something that is very similar to what a breakpoint in a debugger does. You select a location where the probe is going to be quote-unquote inserted, think it as a breakpoint instruction. Uh, when the location is hit, uh, the execution uh, is taken by the handler of uh, of the probe, which will execute some actions, which usually mean collect some data that is available at that particular location, like, I don't know, the return value of a function, the arguments of a function, uh, some other variables, timers, and stuff like that. Um, so uh, there are basically, uh, instead of using exception, there are various optimizations that have been introduced uh, that make it less expensive, so they're using jumps. Uh, and all the tools are actually using and this infrastructure, first to assistant app, and then Ftrace and Perf came in and used this uh, uh, K-probes. Uh, another way of tracing is doing static events. So with k-probes you can specify a location and insert a probe at that point while the program is running. With, uh, with uh, event markers, also known as uh, trace points, the, basically you have to compile these guys into your source code. Uh, so you have to decide ahead of time where you want to probe and you know that at that point you can actually collect some information. So these, are, as I say here, they are static. It's basically static tracing, static tra uh, probe points uh, that I've inserted ahead of time. Uh, so there are some, a lot of them in the kernel code. Uh, the syntax is, you know, is, uses macro, I'll show you in the next slide. And uh, a lot of the tools, almost all of them, actually are able to read and handle those uh, trace points. Uh, the, the, the philosophy is the same, at that particular point, do something, collect data, put it in a buffer, display to user space. Um, so basically the main block is, in, and the definitions and explanations here are in the tracepoint.h uh, file. And uh, this is kind of how you can define it. I didn't give a full example, but basically there are two ways of defining an event using a macro called trace event and using another set of macros that work together, define event and declare event class and you know, other auxiliary macros, but those are the main ones. So basically trace event is when you have one location, one event, do one specific thing. In, uh, in other circumstances, you can declare a set of events uh, based on a, you can define a class and then each class can have def different, type, different events uh, declared for it uh, that differ basically only in the name. The structure of the event and what they do is the same, so in that, in that way you can uh, you know, coalesce some of the code into one location without having to redeclare the event in full because it's pretty beefy. Um, uh, at each location. So first you define your events um, and then uh, this is done in the .h file and then in the .c files where you actually want to probe and want to me measure things and, and collect information, you insert a function call that starts with trace underscore and then the event name. Uh, so you can have trace underscore sked switch uh, that is uh, uh, this call, uh, or in, uh, in another case in random.c, you have trace underscore mix underscore pool underscore bytes. Uh, 
Um, so in the first example, if you go and look at the code, that is this, that's one single event. So it actually uses the trace event macro. Uh, in the other case, in random.c, it has been you know, consolidated in using a class. Uh, and the class is called random mix pool bytes. And that defines several events within that class. And then you, say, you see that each of them is defined by a separate define event macro that is much uh, lighter weight than a whole trace event macro. So that, those are trace points. And as I said, the tools use this. You know, ftrace can use them, uh, perf, assistant app, and so on. So the other piece of infrastructure that you will hear and that you will see is the uprobes. Uh, uprobes allows to do user space dynamic tracing. So the same way that kprobes allows you to do dynamic tracing in the kernel, uprobes allows you to put probes on the fly in your applications. Um, so again, this was um, started and got into the kernel much later than kprobes because it was a little bit more complicated and there wasn't a lot of agreement on how to approach uh, the, uh, the implementation. So basically, uh, you have user space breakpoints at this point, at these probe locations, uh, where your user probes, u probes are inserted, and those are handled inside the kernel. So uh, it also allows to have multiple different tracer uh, for the same trace point, uh, probe point. So u probes again must be enabled just like k probes uh, was. Uh, the specific implementation is based on <coughs> inodes. Uh, the inode identif So basically, think about saying breakpoint uh, uh, function foo line 20. So there's, there's a, is that the similar philosophy here? So you have to specify the file, the offset, uh, what you want to do uh, when you reach that particular point, which variables you want to collect, uh, how you want to handle them, and where you want to store the values. Uh, and then for specific instruction handling, that's usually um, uh, for you know, analyzing the instruction, uh, stepping over the instruction, and so on. That is ar architecture specific. So there is a component of each U probe that is architecture specific. Uh, they're stored in a tree. Um, and when you register a probe, that means you make known that you want to probe a certain location. That probe is added to the tree. Uh, and then you insert the breakpoint instruction in the uh, specific location of the code, just like a debugger. Uh, and then that's where the analogy ends. Um, and then when you handle the, the probe, you're actually calling the handler that, hand that performs the actions that you have specified. And after that is done, you, re you resume to the user space. Uh, as I said before, there could be multiple consumer per probe, and so a probe is not taken out until all the consumers are done. Um, and also, you can associate uh, filtering to each of the U probes, uh, like making them fire only four, five times, or only if some other thing is uh, condition is verified. So they're, they're quite flexible. Um, another variant of this uh, user space probing is probes that are specific for return functions, return points of functions. Uh, so again, this is done in, in two different steps. So your program reaches the entry of the function when you want to put the return probe. Uh, and at that point, uh, you insert the real return probe, which is inserted at the return address from that function. So it's actually in the caller. Okay, but, uh, but uh, beside this point, uh, uh, you know, beyond this point, everything is the same uh, as regular probes. So what is the status of this? This is the latest infrastructure that got into the kernel, right? So basically, as I said, Perf, Ftrace, Assistant App, they all use it uh, and support it and allow the, the user with, with various commands to define new probes. Uh, U-return pr probes was the last one to be added uh, in uh, 3.10. And, um, and then uh, once everything was you know, in the kernel, we started seeing more uh, people contributing different architectures. Uh, the one that's not there yet is ARM. They're just uh, uh, people submitting patches. They're just a new version of the patch for U-probe that just got in. Uh, submitted last week. 
Uh, U-return probes, I haven't seen ARM for U-return probes. I believe the patches did not include that part, as far as I can tell. Um, so this is the building blocks. Then I, I will talk about the tools that are uh, within the kernel tree, basically F-trace, perf, and as of last week, KTAP as well. Um, I don't have a lot about KTAP quite yet, but so F-trace, so uh, it's a kernel tracer. Again, uh, you can monitor many different areas in the kernel, uh, many different activities in the kernel. It's, it's, it's growing, right? From a, very, from a simple tracer, it has been, you know, growing uh, pretty fast. People are contributing different types of, of tracers and different features. Uh, Steve Rost had started it in 2008, and there is a separate tree uh, that you can go and see the latest development on, and then it gets pulled in once or twice per cycle into the main uh, kernel tree. Um, basically, how do the user interact with uh, F-Trace? There are different ways uh, to see what's going on. Basically, uh, you can use uh, this file system, uh, syskernel debug tracing, that has a lot of little files and you echo stuff into the files to turn on and off certain events, certain features tracing itself. Um, so that's very low level um, interface and very fine grained. Then there is trace command, which is a user space tool, which you, you will see was modeled after perf uh, to have, you know, something more uh, simpler and uh, with a syntax that was a little bit more abstract in order to make it easier to specify uh, certain activities to monitor. And um, this also has uh, its own tree outside and still maintained by Steve, obviously. And then there is uh, also Kernel Shark, which is a GUI to visualize the data after you, you collected it, uh, which is very, um, very flexible, I would say, and it allows you to zoom into a specific time uh, interval uh, and zoom out so you can really see, and it's color-coded, the events are color-coded, so you can actually really get a good feel for what's going on, uh, on your, in your kernel. Uh, there is some documentation, it's somewhat kept up to date. I wouldn't say it's 100% up to date, but it's actually pretty good uh, in terms of features and design. Uh, there are some articles, those, are, those articles have been around for a very long time, but it's, it's a start if somebody wants to read up on, on this uh, tool. So again, this also has a million configuration options. Uh, for the build system, and basically each of them will tell you which type of tracers you are building into your, your tree. Uh, some distributions like Fedora enables a bunch of the tracers by default. Um, so, <coughs> uh, so basically how do we do uh, controlling and how do we look at the output? Um, basically, as I said, the, the debug tracing directory has all these little files. Um, so basically some of these, the, the ones I have here, is, uh, are by no means the whole set. Uh, but there is a file called current tracer uh, where you can specify which tracer you wanted to turn on. Uh, if you say no up, then there is no particular tracer enabled at that particular point. Uh, tracing on uh, allows you to specify if you really want to collect the data into a buffer. Um, trace is your output buffer. Uh, trace pipe allows you to actually not, you're not saving the buffer, uh, you're not saving uh, the trace data into the buffer and looking at it after the trace is over, but you're actually getting a continuous stream of uh, the trace data that you are, uh, for the tracers that you have enabled. Uh, there are uh, a list of events, uh, there are, you know, the points where the markers are in the kernel, uh, there are available tracers who so lists you which tracers have been enabled and built into uh, your kernel. Uh, and then there are also ways, as I said before, to specify dynamic tracing points using kprobe and uprobe and, uh, with a command line. And that will be stored into the kprobe events and uprobe events uh, file. Um, and then there are a bunch of subdirectories. That, that so this, if you look at this tracing directory, is kind of you know a complex tree of files and directories. Uh, 
So what can you do with F-trace, really? What, uh, what can you trace? So some of the tracers are also called plug-in. So if you see the term plug-in, I mean, Steve um, kind of uh, uses both uh, uh, interchangeably. Uh, so basically, uh, what can you trace? So if you can trace the, the entry of, of all the kernel functions, so you can actually see the tree of execution. Uh, you can actually have both the entry and the exit point, so you can really see even more. Uh, you can do latency tracing, interrupts. Uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can have this tricky no-op, which it just says do not write to the buffer, but the tracing could still be happening. Uh, it's just that you're not saving the data. Uh, and all of those you can say echo into you know, the name of the tracer into the current tracer file. Uh, how do you specify dynamic tracing using F-trace? Uh, basically, as I said, K-probe events and U-probe events are the files that are involved into the, in this uh, uh, controlling of uh, and establishing and inserting probes. Uh, so, for instance, the first example uh, is a probe at the return uh, of the function, and uh, it's called myret probe. Uh, in the function do sys open, it will return you the, ret the return value of the function. It will save that. Uh, and then you can also set a U probe where you give an address. So in bash at that particular address, you will have a probe. Uh, and then uh, you can clear them by emptying those files, basically. So you, it's, it's very flexible uh, because it is a relatively simple way of, of specifying the behavior of F-trace. You can do the same things by using trace command. Um, and at that point, you can just say trace command record, trace command uh, report, start, stop, and other, uh, other events uh, that are using basically this infrastructure uh, under the hood. Um, as I said, the tracing tree, the trace command tree is out there if you want to see. There hasn't been a lot of activity. 221 was released in March, and I think pretty much I haven't seen many commits after that to trace commands, uh, the trace command tree. Um, so in 310, there's been quite a, uh, more activity in F-trace. Uh, they've added a few things, instances, uh, function tracing triggers, uh, add more option and controls, those are being added constantly. I mean, that's not really news. Uh, different clocks and uh, better documentation. So instances, I would say, is the one that has to be kind of uh, pointed out. Uh, basically, it allows you multiple output buffer, and you can basically direct events to different subdirectories. So there was previously in that tracing tree there is an output so there is a, a single output directory, but now with the instances you can actually create multiple ones and control each tracer independently. Uh, so if you do, um, they, they are under a tree called instances. Uh, and each of them you see that the structure is kind of duplicated because it's the same functionality. Uh, but you don't have to populate them and write the files by yourself. They will be done for you. Um, and uh, basically the, the rules that apply for the main directory of echoing uh, values and ones and zero into the files to control, uh, basically that's the same um, strategy that you have to use with instances. Um, right now, uh, it allows you to uh, have this uh, infrastructure for events, so for the point, trace points that are uh, in the kernel. Um, it, it will be extended, I'm sure. It's just that people have been very busy doing other work in the last few months. But uh, so uh, that's the, the, new, the newest thing. And then the other one uh, is function triggers. Basically, um, you can, it, it, it adds, more fine control of events and allow you to tr start tracing something only uh, when a certain function is entered. So you are instead, instead of uh, uh, tracing everything from the start of your program to the end of your program, you are restricting the, the interval or the area where you want to trace something to a specific function. Um, basically, you can say, if you see uh, the examples of the syntax that I've given, um, uh, uh, basically, in the enable event, uh, you can you can set one. The first one is to set just a plain uh, 
um, function trigger that works for that particular function. Um, timer start um, and then, uh, sorry, add timer on. And then the second example has a five. If you see a column five, that means that you're gonna trace only the first five times that you enter that function. Um, and then the, second, the last one, uh, it tells you how to basically stop this conditional event. You know, you're not, you're not interested in doing it conditionally on the function anymore because you're saying disable the event. <clears throat> so uh, there are other conditional filters, or also called filters. Uh, basically, um, you can uh, collect the data when you enter a certain function foo. You can dump the stack trace. Again, if you enter it, the first one tells you to do it every time you enter it. The second one, only five times, the first five times. And then the third one, <coughs> disable it. Um, or you can take a snapshot of your system uh, one, once you enter the full function. Um, so basically, this allows you to be very, very flexible in how you trace and, and how you narrow your trace. Instead of collecting a ton of data, if you know that something is going wrong within the function foo and not anywhere else, you can just focus uh, the collection of your data for that particular function. Um, there are a few uh, new options in, uh, that have gone in in 3.11. Um, basically, uh, you can dump uh, the trace buffer when you enter a certain function uh, with these two options, dump and CPU dump. Um, uh, basically, uh, again, another way of getting intermediate uh, state because the buffer could be overwritten because it's a circular buffer, right? So if you want to say, save something uh, before you're finished tracing. Um, and then trace off on warning, that basically will stop collecting trace data before a warning happens because then you might get the trace buffer uh, overwritten by other stuff that you don't want. You would just want to get up to that particular point. Uh, other things that has happened, uh, there were a lot of cleanups and bug fixes and rationalizing of the code uh, in, in the last two kernel releases. Uh, and then what's actually happening right now that's a work in progress and it hasn't been finalized yet. So I think this is the, you know, the important one. Uh, in terms of F-trace behavior is the event trigger. So just like the function triggers before, uh, basically, Tom Zanussi uh, is working on uh, a symmetric type of control but for events. So uh, basically, you enable tracing uh, of, of whatever you want to collect only when something uh, event has happened. So there is this, this particular event is called a trigger event. And when you reach that point in the kernel where the trace point is, for instance, then you turn on this other collection of other tracing data um, and not before. So only when that particular place is, is uh, hit. And those are the action at the end, what you can do. You can enable and disable this conditional collection. So you can start collecting when uh, a certain event is reach, reached and end collecting uh, when a certain event is reached as well. Uh, you can dump the stack trace, take a snapshot, uh, turn on the whole overall tracing uh, and also, again, counts and conditional are allowed. So again, from these primitives, quote unquote, you can build a lot of you know, complicated tracing and, and fine controls. So you really uh, are allowed to zoom in uh, instead of having a, a, a huge amount of data, try to narrow the data so that it's easier to analyze. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on um, in Perf. <clears throat> Let's see, what time do I end? I think I'm good. Um, so that's kind of what's going on in F-Trace, sorry. And uh, the next tool that is uh, seeing a lot of activity and that is actually inside the kernel tree itself is perf. Uh, what is perf? So again, perf is in the kernel. It's in, in the tools slash perf directory. And it's a user space tool similar to trace command, and actually it's trace command that is similar to perf because I came after. Um, again, uh, this is uh, Ingo and mostly Arnaldo 
uh, at the moment, and uh, Nam Young Kim also is doing some work, and uh, Jiri also, um, and other contributors here and there. Uh, this started as, uh, you know, Perfmon uh, and Performance Counters interface. Initially, it was called Perf Counters, and then from there on, from the hardware uh, counters, and you know, it, it started growing and growing and growing, and you know, uh, it's basically doing everything uh, that the other systems are doing. Uh, it's still very active, obviously, and there is a little bit of docs uh, in the tool Perf directory. So, what can you do with Perf? So, you can do uh, basically statistics about uh, during a, a particular command execution, uh, again, you can record uh, by running a command, you can start tracing what happens during that command. Uh, and then you can report, because again, this one can be done, you know, afterwards, uh, you can see what the data was collected, what data was collected. Uh, you can then elaborate on various data uh, for different runs, maybe of the same command, and you are uh, able to diff different output files from different runs of perf. Um, you can uh, do a perf top. Uh, so these are all useful things. You know, it's by no means, again, this is not an exhaustive uh, list of things you can do with perf. Uh, you can also, as I said before, with trace command, that you can insert a probe on the fly. Uh, you can also do this with per perf. Uh, and do with perf probe, you can insert a probe at a specific point in your kernel uh, on the fly, and the mechanism is the same if we use k probes. Uh, you can also uh, talk about profiling and and uh, and recording performance data of uh, uh, scripts, for instance, when you you can run a trace uh, a Perl script or a Python script, and you can analyze what what they're doing. So it's kind of uh, pretty interesting. Perf list again. Uh, allows all to, to show you what, what is available in types of events that you can monitor, uh, anything. You can, you can, this is, there is a, a, a big part of PERF for, that has been done for KVM. Um, so you can monitor activities of guests and things in your virtual environment. What can you see? I mean, you, you can, um, uh, you can have, um, you know, hardware events, those were the first ones that were added. Um, so CPU cycles and so on, this uh, uses libperfmon, YPFM. Um, software events in the kernel, uh, and then at the end, static trace point and dynamic trace point, which are the K probes uh, and the trace events and define events that I showed you before. So it's basically every, you know, a bit more, um, everything and a bit more. <laughs> so again, there are a lot of fine grain uh, parameters that you can use to control what you are monitoring. Uh, you can do system-wide, CPU-specific, uh, process-specific, uh, and so on. So um, you, you, you can do quite a lot. Um, quite a lot with perf. Um, again, you can also do dynamic tracing uh, with perf probe, just like I said before with perf, uh, with ftrace. Um, again, you, um, you can use many, the reason I say syntax can be simple or complex is that there are many uh, different uh, sub-parameters and parameters that you can specify, basically, uh, to define a probe. You can do, make it as simple and as complicated as you want. Um, you can also uh, show the source code because it understands the debug info, so a, this is becoming, you know, it's uh, learning how to be a debugger, basically, as well. Um, <clears throat> and again, as I said, it uses k-probes. Um, and it is simpler to use, and this is probably what prompted Steve to write the trace command tool, because the interface here was much easier than, you know, fiddling with the low-level controls uh, like ftrace. Um, as you see, there is, you know, various options to add a probe, delete a probe, show the line, uh, list the list of available probes, uh, do a run without really running. Um, Again, 
there is some documentation out there. Uh, so you can also set a user space probe with the same syntax uh, and using new probes underneath, right? So <clears throat> what has happened recently for 3.11 and 3.12 is really a lot of bug fixes. I've seen going in quite a lot of them uh, and tweaks and cleanups, you know, a lot of fine tuning, uh, which is a sign of a mature uh, tool, obviously, otherwise there will be still quite a lot of features going in. And now it's more like I've seen, it seems to me, and I think it's not just what seems to me, but it's true that there are a lot more users and therefore they're finding, you know, little bugs here and there uh, and different usage modes uh, that maybe weren't anticipated at the beginning. Um, so that's, that explains all the little tweaks and bug fixes that are going in at the moment. Um, as of 3.10, the top of the slides is basically related to 3.10. Uh, you can have difference in uh, uh, data. Uh, as I said before, you can see what was different between two rounds maybe of the same commands in terms of performance, right? And so there are different ways of doing these diffs and they keep adding uh, different ways of, of, uh, um, of seeing what actually changed uh, in runs. Um, also, events can be grouped in the annotate output uh, in different columns. So, so if, you have, if you're tracing multiple events, you can kind of uh, sort them uh, for easy uh, read, reading. Um, and then perfmem, um, that will show you when you access memory. So those, are, those were the latest things that were added. Um, so again, what is not there yet, but what is coming? Um, so basically, Namyam Kim is working on integrating perf and ftrace. So basically, there will be a new command under perf called ftrace, uh, which will allow some subcommands. So you will say perf ftrace, blah. Uh, and so here there are a few of the commands uh, that have been implemented so far. Um, I'm sure more will come. Um, so you can do perf ftrace live, perf ftrace record, perf ftrace show, and perf ftrace report. Um, uh, and uh, again, there are right now, as of today, five versions of the patch set have been sent more for RFCs and stuff. So, and there is a, a tree maintained by Nam Young Kim. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how this thing works. Uh, and again, it's still at the beginning, but I suspect that this would be a very good, uh, the final step after many years of talking about integrating things, this is one part that will f actually happen, which is good. Um, other things with perf ftrace, uh, you, you can specify again the usual parameters of restricting to a CPU, a PID, or using a specific tracer, or doing it system wide. Uh, and again, different ways of reporting the data uh, in the histogram. Um, uh, so again, here things keep being added, various uh, switches basically. Um, again, another thing that's happening in Perf that I've seen some patches, but I haven't seen a conclusion on, on that, is to support uh, statically defined tracing in the way that dtrace does. So uh, SystemTap has a mode that can read and interact with dtrace probe points in user space apps. Uh, so they want to basically add the same capability to Perf. Uh, so that would be good, but it's still kind of, I think, this further uh, from happening. Uh, I haven't seen Masami, do you know? It's still a ways away, right? Yeah. yeah. It's almost uh, done. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Still, um, basic support. Yeah, exactly. Just the beginning, yeah, and more will be built on top of it as, as it comes, yeah. Um, the other thing that I've seen uh, is um, persistent events. Um, basically, if you want to collect hardware error events, uh, using part of this uh, reliability, availability, and serviceability work, uh, 
uh, that has been done by Robert Richter and uh, Borislav Petkov. Um, again, again, this is, uh, I've seen some patches flying by. I haven't seen much uh, in terms of, aside from, yeah, this would be cool, but um, this is something else that might come. Basically, uh, using uh, the PERF infrastructure, even though PERF is not there running, but this other system could plug into the infrastructure and monitor some of the event errors, I mean, sorry, hardware errors that, 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 that happen. Uh, another work where uh, there is a talk on this on Wednesday, there is a Tracy Mini Summit on Wednesday, and uh, uh, Giri here is here uh, to give a talk on this, uh, is toggle events, which uh, basically turning off, uh, turning on and turning off uh, monitoring of events depending on another event happening. So it's a sort of this trigger, trigger thing that we were mentioning for F-Trace. Um, so there is a, a wiki page, but it doesn't have a lot of information. Um, and uh, there will be a talk on Wednesday on this. So I'm curious to see myself and see where, where this is. Um, some stats, this is kind of, you know, not very enlightening, but it, it gives you a little bit of a history of how the two tools, F-Trace and Perf, evolved. Um, so basically, this is the number of different uh, contributors in the change log, nothing more than that. But you can see the F-Trace uh, was active and then kind of lost a little bit of momentum. A lot of people started working on Perf and now still kind of you know, the balance is still towards PERF. There are more people contributing to PERF. And then, of course, if PERF and F-Trace become one, then this, this distinction will become kind of meaningless. But until that happens, I'll keep putting it into the slides. Um, so <clears throat> uh, there is another tool that just uh, appeared this year, um, and it's called KTAP. And uh, it's new, and it has been recently pulled into the 3.13.3 by Greg uh, KH. So basically, this is a more lightweight uh, tracing tool that uh, aims to behave like D-Trace. So it has an interpreter as opposed to system tap where uh, your scripts are actually compiled. Um, so this is just... Uh, getting in and still being worked on by uh, Jovi, Zhangwei. Um, and there is a, a web page. Uh, there, are, there is some documentation. Um, and it has a port of a few important architectures already. And so it's been uh, received very well. It's simple and kind of robust. Uh, and so it's going to go in. So this is, I think, the big uh, news of, of this development cycle is that this has been added. Um, then a little bit, uh, let me see, uh, about other tools, um, System Tap, LTTNG, and I will talk a little bit about D-Trace uh, for Linux because that's what kind of uh, my project. Um, so I mentioned uh, this in here. So first of all, System Tap. This is an old project. Uh, started in 2005. It was a cooperative project. And these are not in, integrated into the kernel, obviously. That's why I kept them separate in a separate section of the top. Um, so it has multiple uh, people working, Red Hat, IBM, uh, Hitachi, um, and um, Intel was there at the beginning. Um, and uh, uh, basically, it was the Linux answer to D-Trace when this is pretty much contemporary to D-Trace. When D-Trace started on Solaris, then we started System Tap on Linux. Uh, basically, uh, it does kernel tracing and user space tracing based on K-probes and U-probes. And that actually, System Tap was one of the, the main driver on getting the stuff into the kernel. Um, and it does dynamic tracing and static tracing as well. Uh, the script is, so basically it has, a, uh, you define, you write scripts in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the scripting language that um, uh, those uh, scripts then are compiled by GCC into kernel modules. The kernel modules are loaded and then that allows you to do your tracing. So this uh, has been, 
kind of frowned upon by you know the community and there are it even though it is actually widely used uh, I've seen from you know when I used to be at Red Hat like customers and um, you know people do use it but it is not integrated um, into the kernel uh, it has become more flexible uh, since it started uh, allowing you to not have GCC installed on your machine you can move the scripts over and we'll, and we'll recognize them anyway and load the kernel modules. Um, you can, uh, uh, you know, run it as non-root, which is what a lot of customers were asking for, um, and uh, also uh, allow only root mode and guru mode for certain specific operations that are more delicate. Um, it can be used remotely, uh, so it has uh, its own following. Uh, and again, they continue doing releases and improving on it, and the latest was from July. So this is a pretty lively uh, tool. It has a good wiki examples and pretty um, well read and uh, used uh, mailing list as well. Um, another one pretty contemporary is LTT and G, LTT Next Generation. Uh, there's a, a good website, and you'll hear a lot of talks about LTTNG here, there was one this morning, I think there is one right now while I'm talking, and then there'll be more at the Tracing Summit, three or four talks at the Tracing Summit for, <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> for, um, uh, for about LTTNG. Uh, again, uh, the good thing about LTTNG is that it could do user space tracing uh, when other tools weren't able to do it. Uh, using uh, a special library. Again, it's also not included into the kernel, so it has to kind of, you know, keep up uh, and people need to uh, download it. But also it is included in some of uh, the embedded distributions. Um, again, this also has been released uh, recently, the new version uh, in September, beginning of September, I believe. Uh, it uses a CTF common trace format. Careful with this acronym because it means a lot of stuff, different stuff in different contexts. So here's common trace format in, in DTrace is the uh, compact uh, type format. Totally different, um, but still CTF. Um, it also plugs into Eclipse and uh, it has a GUI and uh, a tool that reads the data called Babel Trace, basically can actually uh, understand uh, different tracing data. So basically this is also a very well uh, ecosystem, very solid ecosystem, um, as you will see tomorrow if you are go to the tracing su uh, mini summit. Um, and then, let's see, perfect. Uh, a few slides uh, on the trace on Linux. Basically this is something that we are doing at Oracle. Um, what is DTrace? DTrace was a Solaris tool, so based on the Solaris kernel, uh, available since 2005, as I said before. Uh, the idea and why we wanted to do this is that we want to offer a compatibility on Linux for the DTrace scripts that exist out there for Solaris. Also, uh, requests from customers and also inside Oracle uh, was used pretty widely. Uh, and also, as, as I said, if people know DTrace, then they can reuse it on Linux without learning much more uh, in terms of uh, scripting and stuff. So we started this in uh, 2011, was the first release, and we're still progressing uh, and, and moving forward with the port. It's not going very fast, so we don't have a big team, but it's, it's, uh, it's going. So we have source code out there. Uh, we just realized why I was writing this slide yesterday that we haven't posted the new, uh, the new code, but that will be done in the next week or so. Uh, we have a new version 040, um, which is coming out now. We have a beta that is already out. Uh, it's based on our kernel, the UEK, we call it Unbreakable Enterprise kernel, uh, that is 3.8.13. Uh, uh, there is also an older version uh, available uh, for DTrace integrated with the UEK2 kernel. Uh, right now it's x86-64 only, and you can see the beta builds on the open channel that's called Playground, it's publicly yam.oracle.com. You can actually download uh, the RPMs from there. 
so what do we have? We have uh, ported, so this, if you're familiar with D-Trace, you know, uh, we have the D-Trace provider, the system call provider. Uh, we do statically defined tracing. Uh, and also right now, this is the new version, the new stuff that we have added is the user space uh, statically defined tracing. So if your application has uh, D-Trace markers in it, then we should be able to read it um, also on Linux. Um, so uh, we have profile provider, prop provider, and a bigger and wider test suite than the original D-Trace one, um, and made a little bit more robust. Uh, as I said, it's x86-64. Unfortunately, the kernel module is still under the CDDL license. Um, I don't have much input in how that is handled, unfortunately. Uh, but all the kernel changes are GPL. Uh, and the source is available for all the kernel changes, whether, whether CDDL or GPL. Um, so we just, uh, because of this uh, user space uh, tracing that we have finally done, we now also uh, are able to build with PHP 5.5.4 has a, a D-Trace support integrated with it. Um, if you look at the Opal blog, which is uh, Chris Jones in my team, is a PHP person and he has submitted upstream a couple of changes for building with D-Trace. So that's coming. Uh, and uh, perfect. And uh, the same for, um, we, are, we are looking at other in, uh, integrations with uh, uh, MySQL and uh, Postgres actually kind of works already out of the box. So if Josh is here, it's not. Um, so a little example on uh, how to do a user space probe in, uh, uh, in D-Trace. So basically uh, this, it it, this example shows you entry and exit of functions. It's really simple. Uh, so basically you can instrument your, your program by adding uh, the entry and the return probes uh, for D-Trace um, and markers into, into this uh, series of functions. And, uh, and then at the end of when you execute the script, which I'll show in a second, uh, that's kind of the output that you get. You basically get you know, entry and exit uh, of each of the functions. And the script is really simple. You have this provider, which is you know, UFBT, basically user space probe function boundary traces. So it's a way of faking uh, function boundary tracing using user space probes uh, in D-Trace. So that's kind of where we are with, uh, with D-Trace. And we're being careful at preserving uh, the D-Trace semantic so that people that are used to Solaris D-Trace uh, compatible, compatible with, of course, the differences with the Linux kernel, but at least the, uh, most of the semantic and syntax is maintained uh, intact. So that's pretty much it. And uh, what is, I keep bringing up these issues that are still open. Um, so there was one time talk of KBI for k trace points. I don't know if there has been any progress on that. I haven't seen any, uh, anything specific. It's kind of died out as an, as an issue, but... Um, Okay, okay, a de facto. Okay, so it has, it has crystallized whether or not we wanted it. <laughs> um, and then scalability, you know, again, this is still an area of improvement. Uh, most of the kernel, most of the work I showed you here is regarding, you know, more close to the kernel. Um, but uh, this morning there was a keynote where they were talking about this Zipkin system. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically in general distributed tracing, that's a little bit wider scope. Uh, that most of the people uh, that I know are actually focusing on. So that's another area that probably users are feeling that there is the lack of a, a tool that can actually do this. Uh, in terms of code integration, there was talk a year or so ago about integrating the infrastructure of, uh, you know, the, there are multiple different trace buffers that are maintained by perf, by ftrace. Um, you know, there was talk of integrating the buffers, for instance, and have an API uh, to insert data and whatnot. But then 
uh, realized that people weren't agreeing on what this buffer was supposed to do and uh, you know, how it was supposed to perform. Uh, and so that fell apart. But the tools, on the tools level, that's actually happening. So at least the command um, and the usage side, uh, perfect trace is a good example of you know, future integration, which is actually very good for everybody. Um, KTAP, for instance, uh, another item that one could think be a problem. And you know, it, it is a different community. If you're looking at the embedded community and the enterprise community, they probably have different needs. Um, and they want to look at different things, right? And, and so that's another issue that might, you know, bring things separate or eventually better together, I don't know. Uh, and then again, what are the users asking for? Uh, again, low footprint and low overhead, we know that. Uh, possibly integrated in the kernel so that when I get a distro and I install it in my data center or whatever, everything is there, I don't have to rebuild anything. Um, and then, you know, how much data are you collecting? Are you collecting a lot of data from different spaces? You might want to have a way of visualizing uh, and consolidating and also uh, eliminating some of the output, right? Data filtering, if you have too much data or confidential data that you don't want to show. So those are still areas that, that might need some improvement. But I think we've come a long way since like 2006, 2007 when we started having this uh, this as an issue where we, you know, nobody really cared about tracing. <laughs> so in the, uh, a few years have gone by, but a lot of work has been done. And I think now it's, we're seeing actually the tail end of that. There was a lot of development and now a lot of users. So that's actually pretty good. So that's all I have. Um, and I think I'm, I'm on time. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, I have a microphone somewhere, but they took it away. So speak loudly. How is the F-trace and F-trace uh, uh, connected to the kernel? If I want to use uh, uh, old kernel, not the uh, It is in the kernel tree, so. I don't think it's very backwards compatible. I'm not sure. I don't, I think so, maybe some basic functionality you might be able to do, but some, if you're using a, a newer like trace command on an older kernel, I don't think uh, there is a lot of cross, yeah. And that's one of these things of like, you know, no kernel rebuilds. That's one of these uh, issues too. I mean, a lot of people are not using the latest and greatest kernel, like 3.12 or C6 or whatever. They're not using that. They're using RHEL 4, hopefully not, but you know, not, not still RHEL 4, but RHEL 6 or whatever. Uh, and that is one of, one of the problems that a lot of the users have brought up, that it takes a long time for this advanced development to trickle into the distros. Right, <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. By the time the distribution releases the kernel, it's old. By the time people actually use the distro, it's ancient. Ancient. You can't fix anything. That's the problem, right? Then you come with bug reports and nobody can fix it anymore because things have changed radically. Um, okay. I don't, I don't know, Masami, do you know? Um, I don't know what we can refer to an ARM, but um, yeah. the first thing you'll see Intel VMU features like uh, right. 
All right, we're being kicked out. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>